If you look at this, at starting on page one is a summary of all City of Sheboygan funds by fund type. It shows you um, the original 2004 budget that was approved November 24th, the tax levy, and if it was TIF tax levy. And then on page two, we go with the City of Sheboygan tax levies and tax rates from 2000 through 2004. And then the City of Sheboygan property valuations are on page three from 1999 to 2003 in a, in a bar graph. And then there's um, another a graph showing the 2003 property taxes collected in 2004 on page four. Also on that page, you'll see the property taxes for the 2004 budget and what various entities got, including the City of Sheboygan, Sheboygan Area Schools, Sheboygan County, Lakeshore Tech College, and the state of Wisconsin. Uh, the, page five is the 2004 general fund revenues, and uh, then a bar graph of, um, or excuse me, a, a dot graph uh, regarding the general fund revenues that were collected is on page six by the various entities. Page seven is the general fund revenues for 2000 through 2004 and then uh, followed by the general fund appropriations for 2000 through 2004. And then you see a pie graph on page eight, which is the 2004 general fund appropriations. And then on page nine is the general fund appropriations by classification. On page 10, we have the full-time and permanent part-time positions, not seasonal, in the 2001 through 2004 budgets. Um, and the reductions are, are the numbers that are circled in the various areas. Page 11 shows you the, um, the operating budget for 2003, the 2004 amended, and uh, breaks it down uh, as to what was the increase or decrease in the per percent and so forth. Page 12 is the uh, cost center description um, of the same items. And then page 13 is the history of the medical plan rates that we presently have for single and family from 2000 through 2004. Page 14 is the debt service fund appropriations and revenue. Page 15 is Mead Library Fund Appropriations and Revenue. Page 16 is the Transit Fund Appropriations and Revenues. Page 17 is the 2002 Municipal Revenues, which came from the uh, League of Wisconsin Municipalities, which compares Sheboygan to several other cities um, that we normally compare ourselves to when we're asking certain questions as to what we pay and what different rates are and things like that. And then uh, page 18 is also the 2002 municipal expenditures, also comparing Sheboygan to, um, to the various cities that we used in the previous example. Page 19 is the general fund budget increases compared to the expenditure restraint limit. Restraint limit. Page 20 is the Wisconsin City's rated uh, AA3 by Moody's, and um, it shows you their equalized value per capita, the medium home value, the general fund balance as a percent of revenues, and the unreserved general fund balance as percent of revenues. If you all will recall last year when we were doing this, um, Sheboygan was given, if you want to look at it, as a black mark because we left our, our fund balance uh, drop below um, what Moody's thought was necessary for the AA2 rating. If it drops to less than that, then our percentage that we need, um, or the, the rate that we get when we borrow money will be higher, and therefore it'll cost us more. Alderman Stephan. But this 19-1, that reflects us moving back up to where we thought it should be. Correct. Correct. And then page 21 is the City of Sheboygan debt issuance for tax incremental districts. And page 22 is the um, 
the last um, district number 12 and district, the environmental district number one, which is the Northgate district. And that's what Rich had put together to give us some previous, to give us some information regarding the budget. Uh, the budget is something that we all have to become responsible for and um, I just wanted to make sure um, that everybody was aware of several things um, and as Alderman Berg pointed out, we'll be asking for suggestions and I don't know if everybody has but I've got a list of, of 11 things that I've received during the past week to 10 days. Uh, including several today that I'd like to present to council as thoughts that my constituents have, um, have called me about or talked to me about and their concerns. Uh, but I just want to make sure all the aldermen are aware that um, come December of 2004, we're going to start off behind the eight ball, if you want to look at it that way, because of the 2004 wage concessions and the 2004 health insurance concessions that were given for contract year 2004 by, by the various bargaining groups. Um, that 2004 wage concession amounted to $141,500 and the health concessions for 2004 amounted to $114,600. If, if my numbers that I was using uh, from last year are correct when we put the budget together. Um, there's also a pay, a, a, an increase in pay that was, um, that will not start until December of 2004. That amounted to 256,000. Totaling that all up um, comes to uh, four, excuse me, it wasn't 256, it was 211. Um, Totaling that all up comes to $467,100. In addition to that, the Finance Committee, on a vote of four to one, I'll add, um, recently um, said the library should increase their, their expenditures by 3%, the transit 1%, and the general fund for um, contracts should be um, increased by 1% also. That results in another $202,682 that we already um, are looking at spending. Because of that, if we look at $180,000 as equivalent of 1% increase in property taxes, um, we're talking three and three quarters percent just to cover that, that 669,782 additional that we will be starting as I said before, behind the eight ball. Um, one thing that just came through also in your packet this evening was um, a memo from the city assessor regarding um, an assessment update for um, the assessed values for personal property, I believe it is. Not, not including manufacturing or anything like that. And with that, looking at that, that would increase um, the 2004 assessed value to $45,597,500. Of that, if we multiply that times the percent or the to, times the dollar amount that the city gets, we'd come up with approximately $305,000 after you, you deduct what is TIF eligible and we cannot touch. So taking that 305 off, We've got about $364,782 that we still have to account for, and that equates to approximately a 2% tax increase that you're looking at right now. And I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that because I've received a lot of calls that say, we don't care what you do, but don't raise our taxes. I don't care if you do this, and then you ask them some questions, and of course they don't want to lose any services either. But they keep saying um, they do not want to lose any, um, they do not want an increase in their taxes. So um, I was asked just the other day what I thought was, was a fair and equitable tax increase. And based on the calls I've received, I'd had to say uh, zero was a fair and equitable. And um, 
With that, if the chairman will allow me um, to start with um, what, I was, what I was given as some things that people want us to look at, my constituents basically want us to look at. And uh, the first one I, I just got today via email, and um, it, it also includes um, a process for this. Uh, the first one um, was that the suggestion was to take the police, fire, and snow removal off the property tax and add it to the water bill, but there's a part two. If you do that, they said, have the city attorney and the city assessor negotiate with the nonprofits for payment of these above city services. And then uh, the gentleman went on to give me examples and said, um, for instance, the city of Appleton um, contracts uh, with AAL, Aid Association for Lutherans Insurance Company, uh, to pay for those services that they receive that they don't really get assessed for. Um, and they come up with approximately between three fifty dollars and $400,000 every year that they give to the city of, of Appleton in lieu of taxes. And then uh, another example that he listed was um, the village of Ashwabanon who contract with the uh, Menominee tribe who have their city attorney and their city assessor go visit the powers to be of the Menominee tribe. And um, they collect every year from the Menominee tribe uh, approximately well, over $300,000. And if our city assessor and our city attorney would get together and do something like this for our nonprofits, um, it could help substantially as far as um, a reduction in taxes and so forth. Several others, as long as I have the floor, um, that have been brought to my attention and um, as it was recorded in the paper, none of these suggestions, no matter how off the wall they might seem to a lot of people, uh, are going to be thrown out. These are all going to be referred to um, the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee, which originally was going to meet Wednesday, we were looking at Wednesday the 9th, but now that meeting has been changed to uh, Tuesday the 15th, I believe. Uh, the time has not been established because there's several other meetings going on that day and we want to make sure that all of the aldermen can, can attend those, excuse me, as well as department heads. The other items that I've um, been given um, were eliminate the D.A.R.E. program, uh, put officers out on the streets rather than in the schools, let the school system pay for the total of those services if they, if they so choose. Um, combine the Human Resources Department and the City Attorney and the Mayor's Office, or combine the Human Re Resources Department, the um, City Clerk and um, City Attorney and Mayor's Office into one, one department also. Uh, sharing of um, staff would, would result in, in some type of savings. Uh, another suggestion has been combined finance with city clerk, purchasing, information systems, and payroll. Uh, combine the city development office and the city assessor's office. Uh, combine and streamline the administration of police and fire departments into a public, a public safety agency or um, law enforcement and uh, protection agency. Um, Utilize the handicare buses rather than the transit for off-period uh, times uh, and allow the handicare to, um, to utilize their buses to make sure that they, um, they cover their costs, which is a, a nominal fee, and I don't know exactly how they, they charge that, but um, I figured this is going to be referred to transit and somebody's going to come up with a reason why we can or why we can't do this. Um, the next item was let the Sheriff's Department take care of the 9-11 um, the dispatching. And then uh, the final one was um, no matter what you do or where you decide to build it, do not spend $300,000 more for land that is already owned by the people of Sheboygan and Sheboygan County. Um, during the past uh, 10 days, basically, um, I, I received the majority of these um, through email or telephone messages, and um, I happen to know all the people that gave me these. Uh, so um, they are constituents of, of my district, and um, that's all I have right now. So uh, 
with that, if there's any other suggestions, I'm sure Alderman Berg is going to. Anybody on the radio committee here? Got anything? Um, I guess just one of the items that struck me was, I think because the wages and benefits are such an important part of this budget, and especially a part of the increases, obviously, is as early as possible, we've got to decide how many people do we want and where do we want them, and that's it. I mean, not to drag it out till the end of the world. Um, I noticed in tonight's packet, the liaison officer contract is coming up. You know, when the chief talked at the last committee, I think it was the last committee of the whole, they were actually kind of wishfully thinking about two more liaison officers. And, you know, I'm not a police, I don't, you know, pretend to know what they do or how they do it and where it's most important. You know, but we've got to get that from the chief, say, hey, do you want these two officers you've been talking about for a year? Do you want two more liaison officers? You know, do we want, what's more important, to, you know, to have them on the street or in the schools or in the community development or in the dare? I mean, we've got to get that from them, their priorities. And I think, you know, that's what's lacking, I guess. And, and they've got to understand, um, Alderman Peterson has brought in a, you know, a resolution about the um, dispatchers. We've got to, you know, as soon as possible, get that and figure it out and tell the Shared Services Committee, this is what we want you to look at immediately, not meet every three months for, for an hour. It's not going to get done. And we've got to look at the, the, how many people we need, the services we want to support. You know, we've got a committee that is looking into those things, and I think they're ready to, you know, in the near future come out. But as soon as possible, I think we've got to get our, our table of organization set so we know, because from there we can, you know, look at co combinations and different things. But that's got to get set first. I think that's something that, you know, in the past hasn't been done maybe as you know, smoothly. You're looking at, well, do you want to give, you know, $20,000 to this group, or do you want to, is it a half a police officer, or, you know, I mean, we've got to look at those things, and I think it's easier to do it now than it is to do it in November, right, when you're up against a bullet. If I may, can I just add something? Dan? Um, just to let you know, this is all preliminary because there's, there's a lot of issues that we're still waiting for the state on, and um, we'll still be waiting for those for a long time, like, for instance, shared revenue or what we're going to get as far as transportation aids and... Um, and um, other increases that may, we may get, other offsets that may be there. Um, for instance, we'll have a full year of um, storm water fee, but that fee is only used for storm water uh, in 2005, but we still have to account for that and let people know how we are actually spending that. But um, there's, this is preliminary, but we are trying to get a jump on everything, and that's why strategic is going to be called as, as soon as it is. And, um, We'll go from there, I, and I think the mayor's already has, or if he's not, he might be going to be speaking to the department heads, asking for, for their suggestions earlier. Or, um, I got, I don't know. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, already did speak to department heads, and some of the suggestions came in from departments, and some of them were just like Alderman McGraw said, combination of departments, which we're going to look at very seriously, uh, seeing where we can cut costs, utilize personnel better than what we are now. Not saying we're not doing a good job now, but I think we can do a better job of doing that. Some of the other issues that were brought up were uh, combining uh, library services with county. That's one issue that was brought up with us. Uh, county park system, uh, looking at our roadways, uh, what we're paying for our roadways versus the town and the county. So there's many issues. As Alderman Groff said, as a state budget, we know the state is going to be at least a billion dollars short this year again, unless they fill the gaps somewhere uh, magically with some money where they come, that they can come up with. The 600 million from the one-time tobacco funding, the uh, 200 million from the uh, insurance Medicare program, and then, of course, the $240 million from uh, the tribal pack. So we are going to be in a tight budget again this year. Uh, shared revenue will not, I was told by the, by the governor's staff, shared revenue should not get any worse than what we had in the past year. But they did not say how it's going to affect us in the following year. And without knowing all these uh, 
scenarios out there where, where there are a billion dollars already looking for a billion dollars at state level, we are going to have to start rearranging our budgets also because there seems to be only two places to get it, either shared revenue or uh, in the Department of Education, it seems like, and we we're always getting hit on shared revenue, and we just can't afford to do that any longer. So we have to look at different ways of growing our infrastructure also and building our tax base, which we are doing with Blue Harbor, and getting some more funds coming in, because if we, I think Alder McGraw said, if we think we're going to rely on shared revenue um, for the rest of our lives, uh, I don't think that's going to be the answer. We really have to start working in, in creating a larger tax base within our communities. So we are working on it, though. And we will have more suggestions coming into strategic June 15th. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I think, uh, unfortunately, I was on vacation for the last 10 days, so I didn't get uh, the time to get a list put together on some of my ideas. But I've had a time to think about a lot of them. And one, uh, Alderman Groff and, and the mayor spoke about already, and actually, uh, uh, my colleague uh, Bill Steffen, and that's the department heads bringing in what their real needs are. I think they probably are all going to say we need what we have right now, but we're going to be working with fixed dollars, and, and we know that at this time. And that's where we have to begin. We have to first find out what they figure they need, and then we're going to have to work through all those issues of, of uh, debating if they really need the employees they have and the level they're at. And I think combining the departments is one area. In some of these departments, we can probably have significant savings. Uh, as far as the liaison officers, I just wanted to mention one thing about that. We have to remember right now, yes, those officers are there, and, they, and but the school district is paying half their salary. And if we take them on full time, we pay their full salary. In addition, if we did add any other people, we may take them out of the school system, but one way or the other, the taxpayers are going to pay for what's needed in the school system. And I, I am a strong supporter of the liaison program, and I hope we can continue that because I think it's uh, something that nips some of the problems out there in society and in our schools prior to them becoming larger problems once they leave school. Uh, but that doesn't mean there's not ways to deal with it. Dispatchers, that's another issue we should be looking at in the future. The city's going to be building a new police station eventually. Uh, perhaps we'll spend that 300000 Perhaps we won't. We don't know that yet. Uh, we have two sites. And at that time, that's a good time to look at a joint dispatch. And we're building a new police station, that's the time you would build an, a joint dispatch center. Uh, I know there's a lot of different opinions on that, but those are things we'll look at. But that's something that's not going to save us a lot of money in 2005. You can't just turn the switch and expect that to function. Uh, but it's something that should be looked at along with everything else. I do, one thing we do have to wait for is to find out what the state's going to do. I think that's going to be very important because that could, let's face it, they blamed us last year for all their problems, and they're probably going to blame us again this year. I just hope that they don't take more money from us this year and, and, and make us be the ones who have to bite the bullet all over the place and, and try to balance books that are very difficult to balance when they're taking the money from you and pointing your, their finger at you. Uh, and some of the other things, one thing, I guess, for Marie, looking at her, what level, I think the state requires us to be at a certain level of uh, assessed value, like your properties have to be assessed at 94% of their actual value. What level are we at now? We're at 88%. We're at 88%? And what are we supposed to be at? When you go below 90%, then you have a certain period of time to bring everything back up to 100%. We're planning the revaluation in 2006. Okay. So that's something to consider, too. I mean, taxes are going to go up almost the way they raise the gas tax simply because the state is forcing us to do certain things. And uh, I see that as another problem. It, it, it may help us out, but I'm not so sure that it's really a good thing. But the state's going to force us to do that. But I think working in our departments and in our committees, we're probably going to do the job again in this coming year. The mayor has already started it. There's a quality of life committee out there that's going to be bringing in its recommendations. And my understanding in that committee is that there's a lot of different opinions there, and I think that'll be good. Uh, we have a lot to talk about over the next four or five months here, and uh, I'm sure we'll do the work. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, two questions. When will we find out about shared revenue? 
July, December, October? Thank you. And then the next question, um, Alderman Groth, when you were giving us those numbers about being behind the eight ball, 141,000, their wages that are due in December. That is a wage concession. Right. right. And then 256,000, 200 and? No, uh, 114,600. For health, right. For health, right. And the last number? Four, increase in pay? Oh, I'm sorry, no, that's wrong. No, the last number was 211 for the July 2004 increases that are, that are paid in December. Okay, so uh, what is the difference between the wage concessions due in December and the increases in pay? Some wage concessions were as of January, and then there's still that one for July because the wage concessions were split between Half in January and half in July. Okay. okay. So the wage concessions were for actually for actually some months. Three, our total wage concession, I believe, was three hundred and fifty-two thousand. So when when these wage wages concessions and the increase in pay business of July come come due in December or July, this is back pay. No, no. Is, we just have to start paying that. Just start paying it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't know if you were, yeah, I think you were one of the often at the initial meeting. Yep. I believe it was right. um, Chief Sire that said something about yes. this will give you a year to plan for this. Well, the year is coming up very right. quick. So. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, seeing as such a big proportion of our budget is tied up in personnel, salaries, and benefits, I think it would be wise to hear Ed Surik summarize for us where that stands with labor contracts going into 2005, the status of those to remind us, as well as the process of those negotiations um, in the larger context of municipalities in the state. All seven contracts, and uh, uh, we've been watching our comparable, you know, other municipalities, what the settlements have been in that, and uh, we're kind of at a standstill. We, we're kind of same question: what what we're going to get in shared revenues? What's the budget going to look like? Um, unions are willing to talk. They say like, where where is the problem? And we well, we know where the problem is. We don't know how to resolve the problem and how deep a problem do we have. So. Um, Right now, uh, we've we've talked to them. They're kind of saying, you know, where, how how, how much difficulty is the city in in terms of, of wages and, and and benefits and that. So, it's hard to say. Um, we know that um, it's public knowledge that there there are a number of settlements out right now at three percent, like cities like ourselves for 2005, and and some go out to six. Um, the problem that we run into is that. Um, when you're negotiating these contracts, or if you end up going to interest arbitration or arbitration, um, you, you've got to prove your point based on comparable municipalities in terms of what, what they've settled at. Are we being excessive in our demands for concessions? Or are they being excessive in their demand for, for benefits and wages? So um, I wish I had, I had a good answer right now. Just one further question. Does that mean we really can't well settle labor, co or labor contracts until we have a sense of shared revenue from the state where that's going to be? That's correct. So late summer, early fall at least? I would suspect okay. so. But if I may, if I may Mr. Chairman, um, we can lay out some rules saying as a common council, we're looking at no more than X number of percent or uh, increases of, of this and um, that's what we're some recommendations that it might not come to that, but um, I think the uh, 
various groups need to um, have some idea of what the, the city is looking at and the aldermen are looking at as far as what they can um, see as a raise or, or whatever. And it might not be dollars, it might be um, health care costs or it might be something else that uh, we contribute to now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. We, um, in fact, we know based on what Rich is talking about in terms of, of uh, increased medical benefits, I mean, that, that is almost, it is comparable to a wage increase. So uh, you're kind of starting at a ground zero there in terms of what we know for certain what our expenses are going to be for 05. Um, but unfortunately, the way the system works within the public sector is that we don't decide. And we can recommend and we can push, but if if the union or unions depend to go to arbitration, it's one individual and arbitrator deciding, you know, what's, what's the, uh, uh, the validity of our arguments versus uh, the union's arguments. So. Thank you again. Uh, Nancy was just mentioned, uh, I guess it's premature to hope that we get shared revenue by August or so. It'd probably be later, correct? So I'm, I'm wishful thinking that they have it. So to correct myself, it'd probably be later, probably October, November, more like. So it's going to be later in that. But we, I think Alderman Groff said something. We can't stop our budget projects to wait for shared revenue. Re shared revenue is a big portion of our budget. There's no doubt about it. We get from the state around $12 million, between 11 and 12. But we do have control over parts of our budget where we can control and start making those adjustments. So therefore, we have to start this early and, and get moving on that or we can control it. And I think there's a lot of good suggestions out there and we'll keep moving on it. Get Ed, Ed back to the floor, please, Ed. Could you take the projected increase in health care costs for the city and translate that to increased deductibles or increased co-pay to see what the impact would be? Um, so, so that the city's, city's expense is the same as this year? Yeah, we could, I, I haven't done it yet. We can. Unfortunately, um, uh, we've had, for example, our, our prescription drug program, we did, we did some managing last year. We, we, in fact, we joined with the county. and. And the school system to go to a, a higher discount to restat. So our expenses in the prescription drug area from 04, from 03 to 04 maintained the same. So we didn't we didn't have any increase in that, which was kind of remarkable. But uh, deductibles, uh, the thing we're working on, and, and the unions seem to seem to really be concerned about is we want to reduce the cost. I mean, you can't keep dumping the cost back on the employee and and and, and the city. So we got to find some way we do of designing a plan. Uh, that that will reduce perhaps usage of the medical plan, um, so that you know the solution is really is, is lowering your medical costs as opposed to just conveying the cost onto somebody else, and and that's kind of the item we're working on. So we're talking about deductibles. Uh, one issue that uh, one person brought out, in fact, it was a doctor. We were talking about it, and he recommended that um, we really push to have annual physicals for people say over 45 years of age. And, and have uh, physicals for people that are under that age like once every two years. And there's been studies saying that if you can catch some of these problems at diabetes and high blood pressure and that early, early on, you really reduce your cost later on. And our, and our labor force is getting older. We don't have a lot of turnover. And that's, that's one of the issues that we're kind of looking at. So. On page 13, Rich put together uh, his history of medical plan rates and so forth. So um, that's got a lot of information through 2004 on that those are the rates we're paying now. And they're anticipated to raise to, I think 15% is what's been being kicked around right now. So um, that's the estimate. Yeah, that's the estimate right now. But that would give you a, that'll give you a ballpark figure then. And, Not that much. I uh, quality. 
so I was late getting here. I spent uh, two hours, two hours with them. I think, as Mike, as uh, as uh, Alderman Werner had said, uh, there are a lot of different opinions on that committee, which are which is which is very good. They will be coming to you with uh, uh, with their recommendations. They hope by the end of by the end of July. But the reoccurring theme was uh, uh, was combine with the county, combine with the county, combine with the county, or in lieu of that, create uh, a metropolitan or regional form of government. And I, I'm certain you're going to hear that in, uh, in their recommendations. resource program uh, and last speaking with Chief Kirk uh, he indicated that can you hear me all right he indicated that uh, he would in a perfect world like two more liaison officers for school resource officers however uh, what we're striving for at this point is maintaining the status quo and keeping what we do have because the program is very effective and in the long run it saves the city money so uh, that's, that's my only comment concern there The only thing Chief Zyre asked me to convey to the council tonight is that we have been working with minimum staffing as much as we could for the last uh, decade, and we operate uh, at a minimum standard. Uh, we have enough to supply on any house fire and initial attack with one engine or unit uh, in reserve at the opposite side of the city. However, we normally call in additional manpower when we come into those situations. So uh, we'll do our best to try to cut the budget wherever we can. But uh, as far as staffing, we're at bare bones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a, a few words. As, uh, as we move forward, uh, having the arduous task of trying to predict the future without really being able to predict the future, and as we move forward trying to perform uh, self-surgery on ourselves, I would like at, at some point to be uh, made aware of what the, the whole process is of this budgeting that, that, uh, that we're doing. All this talk is really neat and really nifty and there's some good ideas coming up, but, but they're pieces of the big picture that, that I don't see yet or that we, that we can look at and see how every, every piece fits. Um, we don't have a timeline in, in that respect. Uh, I know uh, Mayor Schramm is working with the department heads, but it's very hard for us to even work, <laughs> thoughtfully work, without knowing what's really going on out there also. A lot of us aren't uh, staying really on top of the quality of life. I know there's some dis good discussion there too. Uh, but I see things, little small things, that some are somewhat disturbing. We talk about shared services repeatedly, and it's not a new concept. Uh, it's been around for years. But then we have the liaison officer. What better example can you have of shared services? You got school district and the, and the police department. That's an excellent example. Now we're trying to kill it. So we're looking at shared services on one end, and we're trying to just do away with the shared services that, that already exist. So I think we need to have uh, clear, concise thinking on what is it that we really want. And I do agree with Alderman uh, Stefan here. It's going to boil down to how many people do we, what are our services that we want to perform for our community? What is it that the citizens expect from us? How many people do we actually need to do those services and what's it going to cost us? And just to sum up, we need to budget with what we have. We cannot budget with what we don't have. We can expect $3 million in revenue sharing from the state. If we don't get it and we're not sure of it, don't budget it. Budget with what we have. And if we do that, it, it's, a, it's a very cautionary way of, of approaching the budget, but if we do that and we get more money, more power to us. But if we stick within our means and spend within our means, I think we're going to be okay, regardless of how hard the times are. Thank you. Uh, 
I just want to add one more thing. I would like to remind the council that uh, for the year 2004, uh, six of the seven unions and all the non-represented employees gave concessions in both um, uh, wage freezes and benefits. Of the uh, 70 municipalities that we share information with, we are the only city that did that for 04. So uh, I know that there's going to be a lot of pressure on, on the unions and on the employees to do something, uh, particularly with the county and the problems they're having. But I uh, just keep in mind that, you know, because of what we did this year, both at the union and non-union employees, we didn't have a tax increase. And uh, our, our message to, to everyone here was that we need to solve the problem this year going into next year. Yeah, Dan, I'd like to go back to two things that were just, one is the police liaison. My daughter teaches at Horseman and she loves them. But the problem I have with it is we pay half the cost to city taxpayers um, and we also pay, um, the school district pays half the cost. But if the school district only about 70% of that, um, I forget the numbers, but if you take the, the combined assessed value in the city of people that live in the city and pay their school taxes and the city taxes, we pay 85% of that service. And, and the people in the town of Wilson, Township Boy can pay 15%. So it's a good service, but I think there has to be, maybe the school district should pick up the whole thing because, because the district is much larger than the city. That's one concern. The other one, uh, Mike, on the police dispatch, I've never suggested a joint dispatch, a county dispatch. And they did it in Fond du Lac last year. It saved several hundred thousand dollars. We can't wait till we build a new building. I think it's something we've got to sit on. Somebody, I guess, Bill, you said we can't just go to the county in December and say, by the way, take over dispatch. You've got to start those discussions very soon and get those discussions going and try to resolve the problems. And it's not going to be an easy thing to solve. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. We see a lot of, or we get a lot of talk about shared services. Uh, a lot of people make proposals about shared this and shared that and shared everything. And I don't know about you, but I've not really seen any hard evidence where it works. Uh, I guess I would like to be shown, you know, where does this work? How much money can be saved? You know, you can make all kinds of proposals that this, that one thing and another, we're gonna save lots of money if we put, you know, this department together with that department. And, but I'd like to know where this information is coming from. Where's, where's the facts and the figures? I'd like to see it. Uh, because if you do it wrong, you're going to end up with one heck of a mess, I'll tell you that. Thank you. Bill, I'd like to go back to Bill Wanneman. Uh, call Warren, Pennsylvania. I worked there in the 70s. They combined in the county dispatch. Call Fond du Lac. They combined the first of this year very successfully and are saving several hundred thousand dollars. It's happening all over the country. The problem we have is we pay for our dispatch and we pay for 32% of the counties that we don't use. We just can't afford that anymore. Since we're bouncing around the dispatch, I consider a joint dispatch or county dispatch one and the same. We'd be still, you still have people dispatching city and dispatch and county. It's, it's the same thing. They're still dispatchers. So you may save a few positions in that, but and my point is if we're building a new police station, that's the time to build a joint dispatch center, call it a county dispatch center, call it anything you want. That's the time to put it in. We have the equipment in two places. The county's not going to just accept. 200% more in calls and not charge the city for it. We're not saving all our money. We may save some the first year, but eventually that's going to be weeded out and gone, just as it always is. But there's there's something that we can look at, and I think building a new PlayStation, that's prime time for doing something like that, and including it in our RFP when we send it out. And hopefully building use will have something uh, a little more concrete to give the council in July regarding that site, and this is something that can be in an RFP, but there's you have to be very careful. I was involved in a discussion several years ago on a joint dispatch center. And there were cost overruns in Racine of $4 million in building a joint dispatch center. Green Bay, it's, it's literally, from the people that work in it, extremely problematic. They're having huge difficulties up there. 
It's not functioning good. We're talking public protection and safety, not the committee, but the public protect, protection and safety of the public. And you have to be careful in this. You can't just snap your fingers and do it. You have to study it. You have to find out if it's going to really be effective, if you're really going to save money, and if it's going to jeopardize public safety. Now, if someone out there wants to just say it won't jeopardize public safety and do it, they can, but I won't take that tact on it. However, I will keep an open mind, and that's why I've made this statement many times. We're building a new police station. At that time, it's a great time to look at something like that. We're going to have to do shared uh, uh, storage of property. There's another issue, huge. The state and the federal government have put limits on us and restrictions on, sh on, on storage of property that are unbelievable compared to what they were five years ago. That's a really good thing for a shared service across the entire county, for every municipality and every town. So we'll look at it. Um, I want to ask Nancy a question. Rich normally puts together a, a budget timeline. Is that something that's going to come out like at our next finance committee meeting or? Okay. And then that will be distributed to all the aldermen so that we will have a, a timeline in place uh, by the middle of this month as far as when we're looking at these. And um, the debate or the partial debate was good on, on shared services uh, and, um, and joint dispatch, but it's something that is going to be brought up again and again and again. Tonight's meeting was basically to get some more suggestions and we're still open to more and we'll still appreciate anything coming in from any of the citizens out there looking for um, different suggestions for the council to follow for 2005. And like I said, the, the strategic fiscal planning meeting will be on September, um, excuse me, June 15th, um, and the time will be announced um, uh, later this week. Thank you. I'll make this quick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, seeing that it's already halfway through the year, my biggest fear, we came up with some good ideas, and being new again, I would like to see how do these things get moved to action, and maybe Alderman Groff had already mentioned that. We've discussed about these things. Is there any ownership? Do we send it to the committee so that they just don't get lost, that it's discussed and no, nothing happens? The Where strategic do will, um, will review these, package them together, and send them to various committees, whether they're finance, public protection, safety, government okay. grievance, and things like that, and they'll be distributed that way with uh, reporting back to the Common Council um, within a month or two or something like that. They'll, they'll do the timeline to set up for them or request it. Okay. Thank you. Adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary?